Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to LinkedIn Tuesdays. We're very glad you're with us today. Today is July 13th, 2021. Uh, for, those, uh, for, for those of you who are on Zoom, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please just put your questions into the chat box as soon as you think about it, and we'll get those questions answered. Uh, when the speaker takes a break. And for those people watching on Facebook right now, please just send your questions into the comment field. Uh, I'm monitoring that feed and I'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. Uh, let's see here, please note, oops, let's get the slide going here. Uh, please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. But please note that your comments that are in the Zoom chat do not appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I started a second website, careerusa.org, to help people outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search that you may not know. It is available on Amazon. Uh, since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. And you're welcome to join us this uh, Friday uh, for our meeting. And I'll tell you about our upcoming programming at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. If you'd like to practice your interviewing skills, don't wait until somebody calls you up and says, says can we have an interview? Practice now and uh, be ready for it. And you can practice as much as you want. So if you want more information about the interview group, please reach out to me and I'll be glad to send you some information. Well, when we started LinkedIn uh, all these many months ago, uh, I asked uh, four speakers who I knew who were experts in the field and uh, Locke Alderson, Terry Sullivan, Ruth Lipsky and Kurt Vonnemutter, I asked them if they would come and present each month once a, once a week and present and share their thoughts and ideas and they update their presentations all the time. Uh, it's really been great. These are four people who really know what they're talking about in the field of, of uh, LinkedIn. Uh, today, our speaker is Kurt Vondemotter. He actually has a client emergency. He's a, a retained executive search um, person and uh, one of his customers called up and said, I've got to see you today. So he is currently at that person's office. So what I'll be playing today is his presentation from one month ago. Uh, so if you have questions, please just put them in the chat box. We will take uh, time at the end of the session to answer any questions you've got. I can answer most of these because I've seen this. I've seen all these LinkedIn presentations for the last year and a half. So uh, I think I'm sort of qualified to talk about this thing. So let me uh, start the presentation up. So <clears throat> what I want to do just before we just dive into LinkedIn is I want to just give you a little bit of oversight um, <clears throat> and who I am and what I've been doing. Um, so I, I, I've, I've, been, I've been doing search now for um, almost 15 years, 16 years. And, um, and so <clears throat> there's the, the first thing I want to share with you is the difference between the types of recruiters that you're going to talk to. Um, and again, this is really brief, but there's there's really three different kinds of recruiters that are going to come across your desk. There's going to be um, internal recruiters, and those are going to be people that work for the companies that are recruiting you. They're, um, they're internal recruiters. They've got um, a slate of, of jobs that they're trying to fill for their organization, and, um, and they've got maybe a search team behind that does research for them and provides them names. Maybe they do that work themselves. Maybe they're posting the job and praying that they find the right candidate. But the bottom line is they're internal recruiters. They work for the company and they, your communication with internal recruiters might be a little bit different than it would be with external recruiters. Um, internal recruiters are, are generally there to say no. So if you've gotten on the phone and they, there's something in your resume that piqued their interest in your background, then you want to make sure that you take those calls very, very seriously because um, they are very selective in who they, they, talk, they talk to. And the reason is, is because they just don't have the amount of time that a recruiter like myself has. 
And the, the, the difference is because um, I'll give you an example. When I was, I was working with T-Mobile at one point and their internal recruiters were managing anywhere from 25 to 45 different jobs. Okay. Yeah. 25 to 45 different jobs. And so that's, that, that is very, very difficult to do when you, when you're dealing with external recruiters, we may have five or six or seven jobs that we're working on, but they're all in different phases. And so we have a lot more attention to the detail and to have time to talk to candidates. And so a difference again, internal recruiters, they work for the company. They've been asked the hiring managers been asked them to go fill this job. They filled out a job rec. They've posted it. They've done all the things that they need to do. And now they're screening candidates is what they're basically doing. When you get outside of the um, internal recruiters, there's two types of recruiters. There's retained search executives and there's contingent. And the reason that that's important for you to know also is because <clears throat> contingent recruiters, a company calls a contingent recruiter and they may have a sales job open and they may go out and find five different uh, contingent recruiters to help fill that job. And the contingent recruiters don't get paid a penny unless they bring the candidate that gets hired, okay? So that's a real important differentiation. So sometimes, and I don't wanna say that all recruiters, contingent recruiters do this, but it used to be in the day that, that a lot of contingent recruiters would, um, would gather names and they would, you know, they, they would send out, you know, resumes to companies that they wanted to work with. And your resume might be attached to that. And they'd say to the company that we represent, I represent these 10 candidates based on some of the positions that you've got posted. They may, some of these people may be a good fit for your organization. And they're really just fishing, but I don't like the fact that they use other people's names and backgrounds and resumes. So I just want you to be aware of that. Make sure that when you're talking to a contingent, you can ask them, are you a contingent or are you retained? It's a great question to ask. And there won't be a recruiter out there that's offended by that question at all. But when you do find the contingent guys, at some point you might just have to drop a line that says, hey, you know, make sure that, you know, before you market my background to any of your companies and any clients, anybody you know that, you know, I want permission to, for, to, I want permission to do, for you to do so, okay? Um, it's not a big deal, but maybe maybe it might come across your radar. And, and the reason that that is, is, is important is that some of you may be seeking opportunities in some of these bigger organizations. And, um, and what happens is if your resume gets sent in through a recruiter, so a contingent recruiter sends in 10 resumes, they get loaded in that applicant tracking system. And then let's say that you are a good fit for that role and you apply for it it's going to kick you out of the system because it's going to tell the system that, or the, it's going to, the system's going to say that you've already applied for that job or you're, they've already got your application in the system. And we just don't want, we just want to avoid that on all occasions as we can. Retain search executives. That's what I do. We're exclusive. So when a company hires me to fill a job, they pay me a retainer up front to fill that job. Then they pay me a fee based on, um, based on a contract that we've got but I'm exclusive. By the time they give it to me, there's not another retain, there's not another search firm that's working on that search. So as an example, there are some businesses that I work with and I'll, um, they, they, uh, they, you know, they, they indicate they want to start the search. And one of the first things I'll ask is what, you know, what efforts have you done already to complete and work on this search? And if you have any resumes, do you have any samples of people that you've talked to that were of interest? So um, we work at a different level. Um, doesn't mean that we don't work throughout the organization. So don't assume that because I'm a retained search executive that all I do is CEO and CFO, CMO, CIO searches. Many times in other organizations, I've been retained to fill a lot of other jobs. I'm working on a sales manager job down in, in Houston right now that is a really difficult job to fill. It's a family owned business and I'm looking for a good solid salad sales manager. Um, so that firm, that family retained me to, to go fill or help fill that job. So that's the, what recruiters and the difference in the landscape. If anybody's got any questions on that, Jeff, we can talk about it now. If not, let's jump into LinkedIn recruiter. Yep, no questions so far. Okay. So I'm going to take a minute and jump in here to find my... Oh, Christy did say, just put a question in, do job seekers retain recruiters? 
I mean, companies retain you, but a job seeker, would a job seeker do that? Um, you want to run as fast as you can and as far as you can to um, um, anybody that does that, any, anybody that comes to you and wants to retain, you want to retain, you don't want to retain, you don't want to retain a search firm, okay? Um, and the reason is, is because, um, because we get paid by companies and that's what recruiters are really good at, okay? And anybody that comes to you and says, you can pay me $15,000, and I'll help you find a job. Um, that is, that's just a misnomer. It can't happen. Um, I, I, I'm, I, you know, it just is. It's, it's not. We don't think the same way, and we can't. We can't provide the same level of service. So, um, there are companies that, uh, you know, that they, they will reach out to people that are unemployed and and offer for assistance. And some of them charge as much as five to twenty five thousand dollars. I've seen where they've even said that the company, if you know, the company will reimburse you for the expenses, um, it, it just all kinds of wacky things. And I'm, I'm telling you that um, I, I don't know how many of you get those emails today that from somebody from Libya that's got the same name and they've died and they want to give me $16 million and they want my bank account information and all that. It's like, yeah, right. Okay. Don't pay anybody to find a job. Come to these seminars that Jeff's got. There's more information here every week than you can imagine. And if you can't make it to this call or the other calls, then it's all recorded. So you can go into the library and see all kinds of content. Um, but no, do not pay anybody to find a job. Sorry if I overdid that, but it's not, it's not a good idea. Okay, so let me talk to you a little bit about LinkedIn Recruiter and what it is and how the product works. So LinkedIn Recruiter is a product that was developed a number of years ago. There's none of you, if one of you asks, you know, should I subscribe? Should I get LinkedIn Recruiter? Absolutely not. Um, I spend $20,000 a year to have the product. Um, and it's, it's, it, it, I have to have it for what I do, but there's nobody out there as an individual that could ever get the value out of it using LinkedIn Recruiter. But what the product has done and what it was developed for is, and interesting enough, it was a lot of the work and the design was done by a search firm that you've all probably heard of called Corn Ferry. Um, they're number one on Forbes every year. They're an international business with um, probably 10 or 12,000 employees. Um, and they help, and, and, and I'm gonna take you back in time a little bit so you can think of it this way, is, is that, that you know, um, Forever, Corn Ferry had a database of thousands, of millions of resumes, okay? And they had that database and it was proprietary to them. But just think about it. In today's environment, that database is not worth anything because it changes by the minute, okay? Brian, I see, is on the call today. And Brian might have put his, a resume into Corn Ferry four months ago. Um, and then he developed a patent that will serve world hunger um, and it's not on his old resume. And so they don't have a new resume. They've got an old resume. So where's, where's everybody go? We go to LinkedIn. So Corn Ferry actually helped develop this product, but what it's done is that the technology sits above LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is the database. It's the, the, the foundation for the product. And then a, a new set of APIs were developed and they just hook into LinkedIn. So the key for you to know as a candidate is that when I'm in LinkedIn Recruiter, where I am today, and I do a search and I look for candidates and I start pulling up candidates and looking at their profiles, they cannot see me, okay? So when you look at your LinkedIn profile and you see that section that says recruiters and people that have looked at your profile and you wanna check that on a regular basis because that could be, an, often is a, a source of leads, as far as maybe a company that you should be talking to, or maybe just somebody that you want to, um, you know, uh, refresh your your uh, 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 contact with. But we, as recruiters that are in LinkedIn Recruit, we don't show up anywhere. And the reason is, is because you're going to see pretty quickly that when I'm doing a search for a company, I actually can look at a lot of profiles very, very quickly. And if every one of those candidates knew that I was looking at their profile and they reached out to me to say, hey, I saw you look at my profile, 
guys, I never get anything done. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so let's just go forward and, and, and look at this product and how a recruiter goes about finding you maybe in the, in this candidacy pool. Now, one of the things I want to I want to ask the audience a question, Jeff, and, and we can come back to this in five or six minutes because people got feedback. I'd, I'd be really interested in hearing about it. I wrote an article recently on the war on talent, and it really captures the thought that we're really only at about 6.8%, 6.5% unemployed. Well, those are the only people that have reported unemployment. We know that that national number is closer to 15 or 16, 18%. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of people that are underemployed. Um, but I am on calls all the time and everybody is talking about, I can't get anybody to come to work. Now, I know a lot of it's because we, you know, the stimulus package is putting more money in people's pockets than they were making before and they don't want to go back to work. And I don't, you know, those people may be working flipping burgers at McDonald's or something, but I just... I don't see, I was on a call today and I actually had to leave the meeting because I, I was just, I, I just couldn't believe it. But that there is such a shortage in our workforce, just an awful shortage. And I don't see that. Maybe it's the difference between skilled and unskilled. But if anybody's got any feedback or suggestions that, you know, they're getting 16 job offers a week and they're turning them all down, I'd, I'd love to know because it's whatever your whatever industry you're in, I want to be in it. Um, so that's a question to the audience and, and any feedback you can give me, I'd love to know. Cause I, I really don't think, I, I think there's a shortage of, of skilled laborers like electricians and, and those people. And I know the restaurants are starving for people to, to, to come work in their restaurants, but, um, in the audience that we've got here, I, I'd really be interested to know what you're thinking or hearing. So let's continue and Jeff will come back in about eight or nine minutes when we, maybe there's a couple of people have given us some feedback on that subject. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just start a search. And, and it's a search that I haven't been given yet, but it's likely going to happen in the next day or so. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a title here. But you can see that one of the first things I can see is, do I want to look at current or past, current, past, not current, or past? I generally leave up current and past because there's so many things affect job, people's job titles. I'd rather make the decision on whether they are an HR leader today or they were one um, six months ago. So I'm gonna be looking for an HR generalist. Um, and so when I put up, I can see HR re human resource generalist. I might go ahead and put in a human resource specialist. I might go in and put in a um, human, and I don't want to cast the neck too. You'll see why human resource can coordinator. I saw partner down there. So let's just put that in there as well. Business partner. Okay. The, the job for this is going to be down in the Tampa area. Okay. Um, so anybody wants to move to Tampa, let me know. I don't know that there's going to be relocation, but okay. So I'm going to go to Tampa area i'm going to cast a big net i'm not going to i'm not going to get really specific this is a a fairly specific area outside of tampa but i'm not going to get that specific yet um now they give us this remote work <clears throat> open to work rem remote open to remote work um didn't used to have that um <clears throat> the companies i'm not going to go as into companies yet because I'm starting this search from scratch. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna to try to cast a really big net, but the industry that they're in is the hospitality industry, okay? <clears throat> and for the, those of you that <clears throat> can imagine, Florida is a pretty big state for hospitality. When I'm conducting a search in that market for an HR um, um, generalist in the manufacturing industry, that's a hard to fill job um, just because there's not that much manufacturing in the Florida area. There's oranges, that kind of manufacturing, but heavy manufacturing, steel and that kind of stuff, there's just not a lot down there. So anyway, hospitality should be pretty easy. So then I'm gonna scroll back up and now I'm gonna submit this search, okay? 
right up there. And again, you're seeing this through the eyes of a recruiter, okay? So the very first thing is I've got 50 people, only 50 people in this search geographic area that show up on LinkedIn for having this background, okay? That's not a lot of people, okay? Um, now, I could go in and, and, and uh, make this a little bit bigger by bringing in super, uh, supermarkets. I could bring in um, retail. Could Retail's got a lot of hospitality similarities. Um, I could bring in um, consumer goods, food and beverage. Banking's got a high touch. Management consulting, I missed that. That's not, I don't want that on there. Um, food and beverage. Okay, so now I've got a little bit bigger net. Okay, so now the number's gone up to 177 people, okay? So again, sometimes I want that net to be up, I want the number to be about 500 in the net so that I can really get a good vision of what's out there, what people are doing and so forth. So now this is, I'm, this is a blank screen, okay? I haven't, even, I haven't even started a project in this, but I'm just gonna start looking at candidates. And I'm gonna look at Krista. Christy, I'm sorry. Um, you know, this role, they've got to be degreed. We're looking for their hospitality organization that is, imagine they don't own hotels or restaurants, but they've built a business around having, they must have probably two or 300 homes that they rent out. So it's, you know, it's like an Airbnb on steroids, okay? So I imagine what they're doing is they're providing a better vacation for people because they're offering, um, their staff and their team are, are probably offering recommendations on restaurants and helping with reservations. They're making recommendations. You're bringing kids. Well, you might want to go consider this. Well, how old are the kids? Well, they're only two years old. Well, you're not going to make it all the way over to, to Disney World and back in a day with a two-year-old. So they're, they're, they're the coach and mentor and offer suggestions for your vacation. They may have um, a list of people and offer, if you, you're having a larger party and you wanna, um, many times on vacation, I'll bring in a chef for my family so that we don't have to cook that night. And, and it's a local person that comes in. So they've got those concierge kinds of services. And so I don't know the total number of employees, but that's the business that they're in. So as I go through here, I'm looking for people that have got their gen, they're a resource, they're a, they're a human resource generalist. So they've got the talent acquisition piece, but they've got to also have the probably the payroll and um, and then all the stuff around um, you know just building a strong foundation of having a having a. Uh, a uh, playbook, a workbook, a uh, handbook for employees, um, those kinds of things, okay? So as I look here, I see Christy, interesting. First, I might go all the way back. She graduated from college, it looks like, which I have, I have no blinders on, guys. So we're going to look at all kinds of people. But looks like graduating from college about six years ago. So six years of experience and went back and got her master's. Okay, and the, she started off with Ross. So she started off with a big company. I don't mind that because she learned from how the big companies do it. She then went over to SeaWorld. Well, SeaWorld's got a pretty good reputation for hospitality and how they treat employees and people. And then she's been at famous Tate Appliance and uh, Betting Centers. I'm guessing that this is a much smaller role, okay? Um, so she's accelerated through you know, out of SeaWorld, decided she was tired of the bureaucracy. She worked for 10 months with the feeding Tampa Bay and then um, just a couple of months over at Fam Famous Tate. Now, she does not indicate that she's open to work. Oh no, she is open to work. She's got that self-selected. Um, she hasn't given me a lot of information um, in her summary, 
Um, one of the recommendations that I recommend to candidates, and I hope that every one of you takes me up on this, is in this summary section is where you should put your email address and your phone number, okay? Because you're going to see here that, okay, I like her background. She was at Ross for one year, 10 months, but then she went to SeaWorld for quite an extensive period of time. She's jumped around a little bit. I don't know what's happened there, okay? So as a recruiter, it would be wrong for me to eliminate her for, um, for this opportunity until I had a chance to get to know her better. But right now, I only have two choices. I can click on here and go and compose an email and send her a message because I can't send her or call her. She's not given me her information. That's the only way I can do it. And then I got to hope that Christy checks her LinkedIn messaging on a regular basis and wants to get back to me, okay? But I can also save her to a project. Um, I don't have a project, so I'm going to create a new project, and I'm just going to call it uh, Tampa. Um, enter. Hang on a second. I got to get you guys out of the way here. <laughs> um, and let's see, save and confirm, okay. So now she's in my Tampa file. Let's just go on because we don't wanna to spend too much time on one candidate. So um, I can scroll through these candidates the way I just did, or I can close it out and look at it at a bigger frame. Patricia, she's at Coca-Cola Beverages, Florida. She's been there for, she's, uh, she's got six months of human resource specialist activity. Um, she has been at Coca-Cola for since 2021. Before that, she was at SeaWorld. What's going on at SeaWorld? The second person that was left there. She was only there three months. She was part-time, okay? Here, she was only there two months, um, and she was an intern. So she's probably just coming out of college. If we find out here, she just graduated from school. So she got an associate's degree in 2019. She finished her education in 2020. And that's why I would explain why she's jumped around a bunch. But she's definitely, for this role, I think everybody can nod their head. For, to manage a, you know, a multi-million dollar business, to manage, a, you know, have a couple hundred employees and, and the business they're in probably doesn't have the level of experience, the years of experience that we're looking for, okay? Let's go down and I'm just, I'm scrolling here for just any number of reasons, but I wanna try to find, um, Uh, let's see. Okay. So, and, and I, this, I picked on her only because she graduated in 1990. So you can see how other people construct their, their, their uh, profile. So again, here's Yad, 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 Yadara, Yadara, Yadara. Um, again, not much of a summary. Okay. Um, I can pick up on the fact that she's got her MBA. She's got, she's bilingual. It looks like, um, she was, she's just been with Town Place. So she's in the hospitality business. She's only been there for a couple of months. Um, before that, she was at Comfort and she was more of a coordinator, schedule coordinator, coordinator, operations manager. Again, you can see that if I'm looking for an HR general, somebody to manage an HR function, to work for the COO of the company, to report to the CEO of the organization, um, she may be a fabulous woman, but doesn't have the skill set, the experience that I'd be looking for to fill that role. Let's stop there, Jeff. What kind of questions do people have? Well, you know, you asked earlier about why. Yeah. You know, from a thing, Christy said shortage may be non-professional. Professional careers, there seems to be a void of jobs. And I think, uh, let's see here. Uh, Dana says there's been a few careers in my field that have been posted but I also think breaking into the system is difficult or getting noticed. They're looking for the perfect candidate. And that's what I was thinking. They're looking for that purple squirrel because you know, they're not gonna find exactly what they want. And sometimes that makes it more difficult. Uh, the other members of my accountability group are all VP levels and are all struggling to get noticed. Got it. Uh, let's see here, Greg said, um, Yes, the SEO executive search in Dallas called me when they wanted to guarantee me a job. I asked what the fee was. They said it was quoted four to $6,000 to guarantee me a job. Watch out for them. And uh, there you go. Yeah, got to be careful. Yeah. Um, 
let's see. You know, that's that was really it so far. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, well, so now we're digging into how I use LinkedIn Recruiter, how I use LinkedIn as a product, how I look for candidates. And you can see, I mean, we can continue to go through this, but anybody that's talking about visibility, I mean, you're looking at, you know, this is real live data. I mean, this is not just made up. You're looking at people that have come out of real businesses and so forth. Here, this guy's open at work. He's got the, you know, the, the I call it the wreath around his, his profile, okay? Um, he's got open at work here. Here's a summary. He's just given me three sentences. Um, <clears throat> he's a sales guy. He's not an HR guy. <laughs> national account executive, national account executive, regional sales guy, Anheuser-Busch district manager, key manager, price, price district manager, on-premise marketing coordinator. You know, I don't even know how he got in here. Okay. Well, and, and here's a good, to stay on this example for a second. So Frank is looking for work. And if you look at his summary, he has no way to be contacted. And right. if you look at his, if you open up his contact information, which you don't even, can't even get to that. Right. Uh, it doesn't even show. So, so here's somebody who's looking for a job, but yet they're not sharing their information to make it easy to be found. That's right. I mean, so, Kurt, Kurt would like to, the first thing he wants to do is if he likes you, he's going to call you on the phone. Yep, absolutely. And he's missed this huge opportunity here <clears throat> to under Cruid telling me what he did or at Constellation Brands, give me some things that he did. We as recruiters, now I haven't done this, but I could go into the same search that I created and I, and I could create a, cert, a, a, a bouillon that says that I'm looking for these four things, HR and generalist, not recruiter, and, and I can build a string of bullion. <clears throat> I'm not doing that because I only have 177 people and I can look at 177 people in an hour, okay? <clears throat> so where I'm conducting a search where there might be thousands of candidates, I might have to eliminate some, but the point is <clears throat> I might wanna be in touch with all 177 of these people and most of them are eliminating themselves right off the bat because I can't even get a hold of them. I have to send them an in-mail. And you saw what I, you know, when I, when I do an in-mail, yeah, it gives me a template and I can save that and it makes it pretty easy for me to do it. And I do it all day because I can't just talk to the people that give me their, their names. But we've just looked at five or six people and you can see where no, nobody's given me their contact information, okay? But, but I'll also tell you all, okay, now here's one that this gal has given us, Cindy's given us a lot more detail, a lot more color um, about what she's done. She's used this summary section to give us a lot more on some of the key words that I might be looking for. Some of it's regard, a lot of it's regarding her education and just scan it really quickly. Um, Bloomin' Brands, great company there. Um, Spanish, that's not a bad thing. Um, but um, but again, not, nobody's given me their contact information. It's just, it blows me away um, of, of the number of people that are afraid to do that or don't do that. Um, and it's, it's a huge differentiator. If I've Kurt, got- uh, Kurt, Jeff, Jeff says, I noticed that you looked at college graduation dates to determine how long they've been working. For us older folks who don't put in their college graduation date in LinkedIn, does this raise a red flag? No. No, I was looking, I was using that as an example. You're right. I did, what was, where was that gal at? Was she was right up here somewhere. Here she was. Well, she didn't yeah. have much experience. That's why, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And and so I was definitely, yeah. I, but I, I can go in. So if I want to, so so her she graduated in 1990, but I have a tool in here that I can use if I'm concerned about people being of too eight, too old, or too young, or I want to re leave out somebody that's you know 60 years old, I can go in here and select the year you graduated from college. Okay, so I can go years of experience. I can go um, years in current position. Um, yeah, so right here gives me the ability to slide the scale and say, I want something that's only got, you know, um, six years of experience. 
bring this down if I want. I take this all the way down here. So I, you know, I, I, I can make, I can add all of those things, anything I want to almost in LinkedIn. I mean, it's, the tool just continues to expand, but I just changed the graduation and it, I dropped 40 people. Um, I'd have to go back and see what I actually put in there because I might've made it too young, but uh, one to 26 years. So take that out because I really don't care about that. Now it should go back up to 177. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not so, I'm not, cons I'm not as concerned about age and, and when you graduate from college, some recruiters are going to be, again, it depends on the company and it depends on what they tell us. I mean, you know, I, I always, you know, because I'm a retained search executive, and, and, and I, I got to be honest with you, I don't get any feedback back where generally a company will say, no, I don't want this or I don't want that. Or I want somebody that's younger than this or not any older than that. Um, you know, I, I, those days are, I just don't have those conversations. If anything else, some of the more conversations I've had lately, Jeff, have been companies want more mature people. <laughs> that's not a bad thing. You know, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because they've learned or they know that they, they want somebody that's, you know, done this before and they're not coming here to learn it. Can you go back? I mean, because one of the things you, you've talked about in the beginning prior uh, talks is when you start a search uh, about more likely to engage, because I think that sometimes yeah. that's a very important thing that people need to realize what your options are. Uh, that if people are engaged in LinkedIn, they're more likely to respond to any emails they would get. Yeah. So remember, this this was 177 people. Now it's on, now it's only 39. These are the people that have self selected that they're open to work. I can also look at past applicants. I can look at common connections or are more likely to reply. Um, really important. Everybody on this call ought to know that LinkedIn tracks you. If you don't reply to messages, they put you in a box here that tells recruiters that you're less likely to reply to me. Okay. So when you get LinkedIn messages and you don't want to answer, you're not interested in that role, just so no, just say no thanks. Bye. Um, or not interested. Um, you know, let me think about it. I might know somebody. But if you just delete and don't reply, then that tells recruiters you're less likely to reply. So look at that. I mean, um, open to work, 39 people out of that out of that 177. All of these people, the only ones that have self-selected or told us that they're open to work. The rest of them may be, but they are not. Um, they're not actively. They're not actively uh, self-selecting. And it's interesting as you look as I've, if I've been as I've been reading your scroll real quickly. None of them filled in their contact information to make it easy for you to no. call them. No, I mean there's not because it would show right up. Under oh, it shows name. up right here. Yeah. yeah, no, it it shows right up at the. It, it's like obvious. Like I'm I'm looking for one now, and I don't think I've seen one either. Um, Which is no, you know, it shows up. Make it easy. Make it easy for Kurt to call you up. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the biggest and the best thing, you know, um, you know, and, and as far as recruiters, again, you know, I, I hate to say that recruiters are not going to be your best friend. Um, it used to be, and I and again, I go back to when I was coming out of college and working for the first time. And, and I remember sitting at my desk at Pepsi-Cola and the phone would ring and I'd pick it up and it'd say, hey, this is John Lee and I'm a recruiter. I'm looking for a new district manager for, uh, you know, Campbell Soup. Do you know anybody? And I'd go, well, gosh, you know, and I'd go through my Rolodex, right? <laughs> they had that Rolodex and you'd spin it and you go, well, have you talked to Sally over at Nestle? She's pretty sharp. And, you know, the, the buyers really like her and and you'd give them three names and you could see that recruiter writing my name down in those three names and then calling those three people and writing three names down. And the business isn't really changed. It's still the same. <laughs> but recruiters have the capability through LinkedIn and LinkedIn recruiter to find you. So the best thing that you can do is instead of spending a lot of time on the phone trying to connect with recruiters is make it easy and put your contact information in there use all the words that you can in LinkedIn 
to talk about your job, just, you know, what you did in that job, what your achievements were, what your accomplishments were, because I can remember in, and I'm babbling a little bit, but Jeff, I remember doing a search for Borden Dairy years ago and they wanted somebody that knew how to do route settlement. Okay. Now, <laughs> route settlement. If you don't know it, if you haven't worked in the beverage industry and you haven't ever driven a truck and delivered product, you probably wouldn't even know what route settlement is. But the bottom line is it's, it's the person that's responsible for that truck goes out in the morning. It's got 100 cases of product on it. It comes back and it's got 60. 40 cases are gone. And those 40 cases were sold to 10 different accounts. Somebody's got to do the accounting and the management of where it went, how it got sold, how much it got sold for how much tax and did the guy collect the right amount? Did he charge it? Did it, did he kept collect cash and all that's route settlement. And in the old days, that was very, very, very complicated because my, you know, I was with Pepsi and my guys used to take cash. So they came, came back with, you know, you know, containers full of thousands and thousands of dollars of cash. Grocers paid their bills in cash back then. Sometimes not everything was put on a charge account anyway. So, you could have been in the beverage industry and had a lot to do with route settlement and new route settlement really well, but you might not have put that in your LinkedIn profile and I would have never found you, never found you. I could go through thousands of people that worked in the beverage industry and it would take me literally weeks, maybe months to go through. And just because you work for Coca-Cola, do you know anything about route settlement? So use the key words that you've got and the things that you've done in your background, go through old job descriptions, pull up current job descriptions of jobs that you're trying to get today that you're applying for. Find those keywords, highlight them in the profile, in those resumes or in the, in the, uh, the hard copies of it, and then bring it back and plug them into your LinkedIn profile. That kind of work, that kind of activity, will you'll be amazed at how much quicker you're found and, and your contacts and communication with, with recruiters. Christy asks, what are your recommendations for getting included in the searches for my job if the prior work titles don't always align with the duties, functions, and projects? Well, so that's a great question. And, and Christy, um, this is being recorded and, and what I'm about to tell everybody is, is, is factual. Um, but here's the issue is, is that there's only, there's, there's only one time that you have to tell the truth, okay? And that's when you're filling out a job uh, a, a job um, uh, job application application okay you better get the dates and the titles and everything right there okay your resume if if because you they gave you a title that's so obscure or just doesn't quite define exactly what you did or what your responsibilities are and you need to change and modify your job title in LinkedIn or on your resume go ahead and do it Okay. Now, you might put in two titles. If, if if you know if you were, you know, chief bottle washer, but you really had nothing to do with washing bottles. All you did was coordinate projects. But that's what they called you was the chief bottle washer. Okay. Then change it to project manager. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't want you to take the liberty that if you were a manager of customer service that you all of a sudden become a vice president of customer service. Um, but if you worked for a very small company and there were only 10 customer service reps and you ran customer service and you did five other things and you trained and all that and so forth, and your title was, you know, customer service lead, maybe this is a time that you can give yourself the director title or the you know, senior manager title or something like that. But Absolutely, you can modify and change, um, but you better stay pretty close to the center and don't don't deviate too far. Yeah, my first job out of college, I was an electronic audiovisual tech one. Well, I really was a video editor, videographer, <laughs> but that's where they just plugged in that position in the company's pay scale. You know, that's the job title they happen to pick. So, yep. yeah. <laughs> yep. So again, I think everybody on this call is smart and, and understands and I'm not giving you the liberty to lie, but I'm also cognizant that, you know, you, uh, you know, you, you all work in a really competitive industry right now. There's, there's a war on talent. 
Um, and, and so you need to be flexible, adjustable, and creative. Um, somebody on this group just it came up in one of the questions, Jeff, and I want to just reinforce how excited I am to hear accountability groups. I can't speak highly enough for groups or for people to put together small accountability groups where three or four of you, I generally suggest that men stay with men, women with women, but the whole objective is to meet on a weekly basis. Um, and don't be offended or shy away with if if three of you are, you know, it's accountability group and every one of you is in, you know, sales, um, because the whole objective with accountability groups is if there's a job open in Dallas, we want one of the two of us to get that job. Um, but the fact is, is if Brian gets it and um, Diane doesn't get it, um, Brian's going to have a ton of leads for Diane um, of companies that he was talking to that he didn't, he passed on or he, he was in the middle of it. They're still a great company. And he's going to stay in good standing with that organization. And he's going to go back to them and say, hey, you know what? I've got somebody that I really think you ought to meet and talk to. Her name is Diane. We've worked together closely for the last six months. And, um, you know, I, I think she, she, she could equally do the job equally as well as I could. So don't shy away with being with people that do like things to you. There was a group, I know there was a group of accounting people who were together and they used to all go on the same interviews even because they got each other into the interviewing thing because who else do you know and right you know one person would go on the interview and they go they know the other person's about to go they would call the person say hey, here's what they're talking about here's your hot buttons because they didn't care who got the job they just wanted one person out of their group to get the job right because they knew that that would get them one step closer so well and and i used to say this kiddingly in it but it's the truth now is is that and Dennis, my friend Dennis O'Hagan passed. He's wonderful, Dennis O'Hagan. He used to say, you know, we want to keep the jobs local. We don't want those California guys and those New York guys to get the job. So <laughs> now I hope there's nobody on the call from California or New York and I'm offending anybody. But, you know, we, there are a lot of people in Dallas that are looking for jobs that are perfectly qualified to do the work. And let's keep the work within our, our team here if we can. So Tammy wants to know, uh, what's the tendency to limit the accountability group partners by gender? Well, because I think that there's a lot of other things that come out and have the ability that people have conversations about in, in, a, in accountability groups and during a job search. Um, and, and a lot of it is, 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 some of it can be at times, and it doesn't mean that it does, but it's okay to talk about this stuff is that you know, my, my spouse just doesn't understand what's going on. I get, you know, I get rejected every day. Um, I sit in my office and I only get one interview a week and they just don't understand what's going on. And I think it's easier for males and males to have that dialogue together and females and females than to cross genders. Uh, but I, you know, I, I'm just being, um, I'm maybe being a little bit too, too holistic um, because there's a lot that goes on in this job search. And and, and, and people don't all, especially the last year, we haven't had the time to talk to people like we have in the past. Um, and because we're not face to face. So I, I can't sit there and say, Fred, you know, I am so frustrated and, and you know, and Fred can see it in my eyes and the anxiety and, you know, and I think it's just better for men to be men, women to be with women during some of those dialogues. That's all I'll say. Okay. Uh, uh, Dana says, uh, when we were talking about replying and, you know, being active on LinkedIn, does that apply to all messages or just messages from recruiters? She says that she's bombarded by crypto salespeople. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that, Jeff. Um, have, has that ever come up? Because I, the, the question's a big question. Yeah. Um, being, I think, being, yeah, I'm sorry. Being active on LinkedIn means that you like a post that you share somebody else's post that you see, yep. that you answer if somebody sends you a connection request. If somebody sends you a note, now if they just send you a connection request, you can just hit ignore. But if they send you a personal note saying, oh, I saw you on this call, on the LinkedIn Tuesday call, I'd like to connect with you, and you just ignore it, that's gonna count against you. So when you see something like that, if you decide not to, uh, even if you're not interested in buying crypto, you can say, no, thank you. That's right. Just, just say thank, reply. not thanks, not interested. Right, not interested. Yep. Yes, reply back. If you get a personal note, 
from anybody on LinkedIn, reply back because you just want to show that you're responding to end mails, that you're responding to connection requests. Uh, and if you can, you know, there's uh, Terry Sullivan who presents, who presented last week, talks about you want to like something every day, you'd like to share something every day, and maybe once a week you go find an article and you repost it from the outside of LinkedIn and you bring it in to share it with your connections so that people can start to know who you are. Yep. No, those are those are very valuable tools and uh, um, and 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 it's easy for you all because you're 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 spending a little bit of time on the internet these days is to find to Jeff's point just one article that you can share that has some kind of meaning and and so forth. But using those social media triggers, the likes and the passing or the sharing is a very very valuable way of of increasing and 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 making your network more powerful and bigger and stronger. Uh, other questions people have about recruiters or LinkedIn? All right, uh, I know we've got some questions here and I'm gonna answer some questions uh, that, uh, like I said, that was Kurt's presentation pre-recorded from a month ago, but I'll answer some questions that came up in the chat box right now. Uh, number one, how important is it for filling out the skills section um, for recruiters? I often see that uh, I meet one or two skill requ uh, required, uh, but yeah, I am qualified for the position. Yes, it's very important that you fill out your skill section. Today's example, Kurt didn't go and put any skills in, but in the past, he's gone and typed in that he's looking for, you know, somebody who has this skill, that skill, this skill, and when, the, when he does that, when he sees the profile, it will pop up and it actually highlights his, the profile in yellow. So he'll be able to see the skills that he's looking for. And if you have it in your skills section, but you don't have it in your about section or you don't list it in any of your jobs that you've done, he then questions, well, wait a second, I don't see where you have this particular skill in this particular job. So just be aware of that. Make sure that you spread those keywords out. Uh, uh, Ruth Lipsky will talk about one of the other LinkedIn speakers that you need to have the same keyword should be used three to five times in your profile. So you may want to have it in your about section, have it in one or two of your jobs, and then to have the skill at the very, very bottom in the skill section. So Kurt didn't do it, but when he has looked at bigger, you know, something that he's got 500 or 1,000 people, he'll go and put a couple skills in he specifically needs to make sure that he finds that particular person. So yes, yeah, skills, very, very, very important. Uh, Lenora asks, uh, is the no reply to in mail or any message? I think we addressed that. Yes, you want it for all messages. Just reply, just say no, thank you. It just takes a second and it just shows that you're active on LinkedIn. Uh, Kurt has done this in the past where he starts a brand new thing. There's 760 million people on LinkedIn. And then when he clicks on likely to respond, that goes down to like 43 million. So there are a lot of people out on LinkedIn that just don't reply, they don't respond. And then he can click on, you know, who's, who's, who's willing to reply and who is looking for work. And the numbers come down to, you know, 31 million or whatever the number is. And it really helps him refine his search and get rid of the ones who are not looking at it. So yes, please reply. Uh, I was told that they don't even contact old employers anymore. They just investigate with references. It's up to each individual company, what every, what every company will do. Uh, I know that when I was uh, running the businesses, I did that if I ever got a phone call, um, I always would just say, Tell me what they told you, and I will, I'll confirm dates and pay. And that's I, and all I they would say it. And as long as it was close, you know, within a month, you know, with a dollar of the salary, or whatever, I'd say yes, I'll confirm that. But you know, I would never go and give a reference. And I think it's up to each individual company. I know my daughter started a new job last October, 
I don't think they checked references. I don't think they checked with the prior company, which happened to be IBM, but I know they checked with references because her references would contact her afterwards and go, hey, I just got a phone call or I just got a, uh, a um, I just got a, a email with the link to uh, fill something out. So I think it's up to each individual company what's going on. Okay, uh, another question. Do recruiters look at things like principal or senior product owner as opposed to just product owner? If somebody is searching for a product, it depends. If they do a Boolean search and they put quotes around senior project manager, you have to have all three words. If they just type in senior project manager, anything that says senior or project or manager will come up. So once again, depends on how they're searching for it. I will also say that on LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you're using the titles that default in LinkedIn. As you notice, when Kurt was typing in his titles, he was just selecting from the drop-down menu. So if you have some weird chief bottle washer title and it's not in LinkedIn, use the default LinkedIn job titles. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Michael says, if you fall into the not likely to respond class, do you get out of jail by starting to respond or are there other starting to respond or are there other actions to take like going back in time to respond? Well, none of us have a time machine. If we did, we'd all be very rich because we'd have gone back in time. We would have bought Apple many, many years ago and we'd be very rich right now, not having to look for a job. So um, I would say if you haven't been doing it, just start doing it and it will show you being active. I mean, that's the whole key. You know, if you, if you were not active in the past, just start and it will help get you going. It'll see, it'll show that. Like something, like a post that you see. Uh, Terry Sullivan last week, he talked about, you only need to spend 10 to 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn. You quickly go through, you take care of all the little red across the top, you check the homepage, you check your uh, connection requests, you check any messages you have, and then find an article and like it that somebody shared. Find, a, find something and share an article and like an article. And like I said, once a week, you may just want to uh, post an article. And Terry talks about you know, how you can go do that with a couple different uh, feeds or something called Feedly, F-E-E-D-L-Y. Uh, that you can go and you can get stuff and you can pull articles about whatever topic you'd like. Uh, Lenora says, uh, what about confirming titles? And I presume you're talking about job titles. As Kurt said, a job a, um, application, a job application has to be true. So if you will call the chief bottle washer on your job application, you put down chief bottle washer and then in parentheses, you could put project manager, okay? But put down the correct title of whatever you were legally called. I used to, you know, when I was filling out applications, um, I put down electronic AV tech one or tech two, whatever it was, but in parentheses, I would put video editor and videographer because that's what I was really doing just to make it easy so people would be able to understand that. And that's true on my resume, I would do the same thing, but a job application, has to be accurate because they can go and fire you if you don't, uh, if you misrepresent what you do. Uh, let's see here. I think those are all the titles we've got. I know we're just about out of time here. So let me share my closing, closing screens we've got here. Uh, next week, our speaker will be Locke Alderson. He's gonna talk about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies to get results. Uh, okay, I need everybody to please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jeff Morris, promise to always send a personal note whenever I send a LinkedIn request to anyone. This includes when I use my cell phone or my computer. Uh, I get LinkedIn requests every day and there's no personal note with it. So why should I connect with you? Because I don't know where you saw me, why we should connect. Just tell me you saw me on LinkedIn Tuesdays, you saw me on Networking Mondays, whatever it is, and we'll be sure to, you know, I don't, I'll connect with you then, but I just want to know how we met. 
All right, Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training five days a week. Uh, tomorrow for interviewing Wednesday, we do interviewing sessions every Wednesday. Tomorrow will be session number 11 of 13, and it's informational interviewing. So uh, this is, a, I think, a really valuable thing because how do you find your next job? 80 to 90% of jobs are found through networking. How do you network? You network by doing informational interviews. You ask people about stuff. You run the interview. So join us tomorrow to find out how to do an informational interview. This Thursday, we've got a special guest speaker for Effective Resume Thursday. Alan, uh, who's the operation director at Next Step Recruiting, will share his tips and tricks. And he'll tell you he sees 100 resumes a day. And he has to put them in the pile that he likes and the pile that he doesn't like. And he'll share what he likes and what he doesn't like and what gets you rejected. So please join us this Thursday at 1 o'clock. This Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, simplifying the job search through trust. And trust stands for five different things. Um, I don't remember what they are right now, but uh, it's a very interesting presentation. I saw the gentleman do this. He's from the Philadelphia area. Um, so we can all ask him, does he like Geno's or Pat's? We'll figure out which one it is. But, uh, you know, so it's, it, I know it's a good presentation. I enjoyed watching it when I saw it a few months ago. Uh, next, uh, oh, this Friday, Women of Wisdom will be meeting. Uh, they meet the first and third Friday of the month. If you're interested in joining the group, uh, you do need to send an email to wow at careerdfw.org. It is by invitation only. Uh, the group is actually this week going to meet at noon. So not one o'clock, as it says on the screen, they'll be meeting at noon. Uh, next Monday, we'll have a speaker talking about networking. Uh, if you'd like to join the Career DFW and Career USA LinkedIn groups, we have over 13,000 members in the Career DFW group. Uh, you don't have to live in the DFW area to join the group. It's just the group I started first because that's the first website we started. You're welcome to join both. You can join the Career USA group and list, live anywhere you like to. Whatever you like to do, it's just a way to, you know, make more connections because the more connections you have, the better chance you'll be able to network your way into a company. This session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. Please like us on Facebook. Please follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube. When you do that, the more people who do, uh, it opens up more uh, functions that YouTube and Facebook offer to us as uh, being on their platform. On the Career USA YouTube channel, it looks something like this. Click on playlist, it's the easiest way. That way you can view all the different lists that I've put together. <clears throat> and then don't click on the video, but when you see that red arrow where it says view full playlist, click on the view full playlist and up will come a list of all the different speakers in chronological order. And if the newest one's not on top, click on that little sort button. And <clears throat> uh, you can go back and watch any of these on there. There's well over 200 videos on the YouTube channel right now that you can view. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops, if you're not getting that daily email that I put out, please join the Career USA mailing list. You can do so by sending an email to Career USA, the plus sign, subscribe at groups.io. <clears throat> you will not get spam, but what you will get is the title of the day, the topic of the day, and the Zoom link. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you'll be able to find the information you're looking for. Please know Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. What I've done over the last 13 years has strictly been as a volunteer. All of our speakers are volunteers. They all want to help you land your next great job. Uh, please consider making a donation when you get your next job. We really appreciate it. It helps pay for Zoom. It helps pay the web names, web hostings, and anything I can't get donated. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, have a great week, and uh, we'll see everybody hopefully later this week.